My name is Larry Wood. I am professor of theology and Wesley studies at Asbury Theological Seminary. And I'm glad today to welcome as our guest on campus and speaker for the Ryan Lectures, Dr. Frank Machia, who is professor of Christian theology at Vanguard University. He has served as president of the Society of Pentecostal Studies and for many years has been the senior editor of the NUMA. And he's also served on some very important uh, committees, such as the uh, Faith and Order Commission of the National Council of Churches. And uh, he has written many papers and books dealing with soteriology, pneumatology, and uh, ecumenical themes. One of his most recent books is entitled, Justified in the Spirit, Creation, Redemption, and the Triune God. And today, uh, this morning, in our chapel service, uh, he uh, presented a lecture to us today that was very inspiring, entitled, Justified in the Spirit, According to Galatians. And uh, so we're going to have a conversation that probably will stem in large part from that. Uh, Dr. Machia, uh, you are, uh, you are uh, a member of the Assembly of God, and uh, I'm a member of the United Methodist Church. There probably is a great deal more similarities than differences between us. And certainly uh, we're all part of the larger uh, understanding of, 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 uh, of a tradition that has appreciated an emphasis on the Holy Spirit. Um, my reflection about that goes back to the importance of Aldersgate for John Wesley. Uh, there's been a lot of debate about what really happened to Wesley at Aldersgate. I think there's some things that are pretty clear that happened to Wesley at Aldersgate. Uh, and that was a, a very, turning, very much of a turning point in his life uh, when he felt his heart strangely warmed. Uh, he had been discussing things with uh, some uh, Moravians and uh, they were telling him you could have the certainty of your relationship uh, of, with God. You could really know that you were uh, truly of God and uh, were truly saved and born of the Spirit. And uh, Wesley sought for that as a member of the Church of England. That, that had not been a part of his own legacy as such, that sense of certainty which he learned from the Moravians. And uh, as a result of his Aldersgate experience, uh, uh, right, up, right about that same time, he, he wrote a sermon on salvation by faith, which he talked about justification. And he understood it in the larger sense uh, and, and brought in the importance that justification uh, is everything from our acceptance with, uh, of, of, of God to uh, a real inner change that takes place in our life through the Holy Spirit, which uh, really goes along with the thing that you, you've been talking to us today about being justified in the Spirit. Um, I want to make one more comment, and I'm going to see where you go with this. Uh, after his Aldersgate experience, and he felt his heart strangely warm, he thought he would never have any more fear and doubt. He thought that, really, he thought that he probably had experienced what he had come to call Christian perfection. But he discovered he still had some doubt and fear. And he wanted to really find out more about, the, as he said, the things of God. And so he went to Hernhut in Germany and met with uh, the Moravians there, who were, that was the headquarters. And he talked with particularly a carpenter there who was a lay preacher by the name of Christian David, who told him that it was one thing to be justified. And in addition to that, it was important to be cleansed from all sin and to experience your own Pentecost and have the full assurance of faith. And that's what Wesley wanted, was a full assurance of faith. I suppose if there is anything that's been the driving forth and force in Methodism has been that quest for having the full assurance of faith. And Wesley defined that it really in terms of Christian perfection. And as we both know, uh, Pentecostalism uh, was an extension of that quest for full assurance. Uh, William Seymour, who, who studied at God's Bible School here in Cincinnati, 
had some connections uh, in this area with Methodism. And, uh, and through uh, his influence in large part, uh, Pentecostalism in, in Los Angeles got launched. Uh, my question to you, do you suppose there would have been a Pentecostalism had it not been for Wesley's Aldersgate experience? I seriously doubt it. Uh, I mean, God and his sovereignty could do anything, but when you look at the history, you can see the significant dependence of the Pentecostal movement on that route. And I agree with you. I mean, when I look at Azusa Street, I see something similar as well. I mean, there's this drive for more of God, this drive to experience God, not just confess God or not just assume that because you know you've made a confession or have been baptized that somehow you can become a bench warmer in the church and your Christianity is settled and all is um, all going well. I think what the Wesleyan holiness and Pentecostal movements do is they try to wake up the bench warmers and to say there's more of God to be had, to be experienced. There's, a, a, there's, there's this quest that we're to be on. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, there are struggles. Uh, we groan in the Spirit, still somewhat burdened, and yet reaching by the Spirit for more of God, for greater and greater foretastes of that kingdom to come. And I see that. I see that uh, from Aldersgate to Azusa Street, if you will. And there's something very important about this. Um, this understanding of God as near at hand, as a presence in life that you can become aware of and that you can cultivate and that you can grow in as a dynamic, transformative experience. And for a lot of people who are raised in mainline churches, where there's not much emphasis on the Holy Spirit, and they talk a lot about God as creator or even about Christ and his redemptive work, without much emphasis on the Spirit, there's often something lacking experientially to their confession. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people have testified of this um, when they got involved, for example, historically in the holiness movement or when they became involved in Pentecostal or charismatic movements. They often give testimonies that runs something like this, you know, um, I had my confession, I believed in God as creator, I believed Christ gave all for me, but there was still something missing, a missing dimension to my Christian life. Faith wasn't that real to me as something that I could live. God as someone who I can experience and be aware of as a powerful force in my life. And when they discover this, it's like an awakening. It's, why didn't somebody tell me about this before? You know, why, did, why wasn't I aware of this before? Why, why has this been lacking? Why has this been missing? And it can really be a, a wonderfully rejuvenating experience. So I think we, we, we both share that kind of larger, I don't know what you would call it, pietistic, uh, you know, Wesleyan holiness, Pentecostal, a trajectory or, or, or cluster of families in the Christian church that has highlighted that third article of the creed, I think, if you will, without neglecting the other two. But, but I can, I can, uh, it's, it's, it can be a quite powerful awakening when people do discover that.